Hey everybody, I just wanted to show what a uh, basic procedure would be for creating a tile set in Piscal. And so for reference here is a tile set taken from uh, opengameart.org. And here is the mock-up of the level created with those same tiles. So you can see that there are individual pieces here such as like corner pieces up in these four, um, individual thin pieces, so just a standalone single block. Um, single middle, single bottom, uh, thin row going horizontally, one floating block, and then interior blocks, I think, here. And those are the bare minimum number of blocks that you would need to construct some world. This one has a number of other ones as well, such as slope blocks and underslope blocks, as well as this log uh, bridge. You don't need all of those to construct a basic level, but it helps um, for you to make more complicated shapes and to fill up your game world. Um, so we're just talking about the grass covered blocks in the foreground. We're not talking about the trees or the stump flower um, roots, I guess, bush or even this little cave structure. All that would be background detail and including the sky. Um, we're just talking about the platforms themselves. So just wanted to show those quick examples. Uh, here's Piskel that I have loaded up with the default settings right now, which I believe is a 32, 32 pixel um, size document and I can scribble on that. So when we're making a tile set, it can be helpful if we start from a template. I do have a template over here that is in progress, so there's the template layer. Um, I have an image provided for my students to download, but you could um, just make your own if you want to know ahead of time what sort of tiles you want to make, and here's the progress. But when you first open up, you just have this blank document. It can be helpful to start from here, though, if you're going to make some initial repeating tiles because the settings in Piscal can allow for you to do that more easily. If I come up to Preferences and go to Tile Mode and enable it, when I draw here you can see a mimicked version of what I'm drawing uh, extending off the canvas and back on the opposite side. So if we wanted to make some uneven sort of ground surface here like this, then I can see where it connects with itself on the left and the right hand sides, which can help me to adjust and make different decisions, maybe make this a bit more subtle like that. Let's chop off the top there so we've got more of a consistent ground plane. And now that looks a little bit more satisfying. And then I could fill it in on the bottom and I can see how it tiles left right, but it does not tile um, up and down because I didn't allow for that. Right? So if you want something to tile in all four directions, then you need to draw all the way up to the top and back um, up the bottom again, or you can just check for tiling in certain directions. So with this as my example, I could copy this and then come over to my Piscal file. I'll make a new layer so I don't mess up what I already have. And I could paste, there it is up there. So I'm going to select this. Or actually, I could just use the hand and move it since it's alone right now. But I could put this in the section for the middle tile up here um, because now I've checked that even when this repeats with its neighbors, it's going to look good. But in this document, the second document now, I can make the corners connect. So I could draw additional details coming down this way. And whatever pixel this is that I'm lining up with on my side tiling tiles, I would have to make sure that that was consistent. Uh, you can use uh, the line tool for this just to know this is where my tile is going to line up then we could copy that paste it into this tiling mode document and keep working on it and I would really just recommend kind of going back and forth like that because tiling mode works on the basis that this is the edge of the document uh, right here that's going to tell you that's how that tiles but in this sheet we don't have that ability it would tile the entire sheet you may see also that in this tile set I have these blue lines displaying which is a help for um, knowing where one tile begins and ends. That can be accessed in Preferences, so you can see Tile Mode is off. Grid, so you want to enable the grid, but by default the grid is a single pixel size like this, which is not particularly useful. Um, this is the grid spacing, so we could have every second pixel, 4, 8, 16, 32, and we can go all the way up to 64. My tiles are 32, and so when I go all the way up here, then I can see my grid very nicely. You can change the thickness, I think, of these lines. Yeah, there they are. I'm not sure why you would. They're perfectly visible at one. Uh, and then you can also change the grid color if you have colors that are too similar to the ones in your document, then you might want to change the grid color to something else. Okay. 
So that's just a little bit of how you might set up your document to easily go back and forth between tiling mode to make individual tiles and then the sheet where you can copy paste them all over the sheet. Just one extra note because I would feel bad if I didn't mention it. Normally when you're making tiles you wouldn't have the, the surface come all the way like halfway down or one third into a tile. Um, you can see with the example that I was doing earlier that these come right up to the edge usually because a tile in the simplest way is interpreted as either solid or not solid. We can draw um, custom colliders in game engines like Unity that rounds things off or cuts off the corners. But typically, you should treat the ground as one complete tile, even if you have little bits missing, and then the next tile up as the open air tile that your character would walk on. But just for an example of how you might make something tiling and repeat to a corner, this is a good example. Okay. Thank you, and I'll see you next video.